Good morning, guys. Why is it so difficult to get testosterone replacement therapy through the NHS? I shall tell you. Um, the commonest presenting symptoms of low testosterone are an element of low mood, anxiety and depersonalisation. Now, what's the most likely diagnosis? Depression, anxiety and depersonalisation. But these are symptoms. These are not actually um, the cause. Now, unfortunately, the NHS has a firefighting attitude towards illness. And it's really up to you guys to look to prevention. Now, traditionally, we've obviously thought about prevention as lifestyle, nutrition and exercise. And then we've placed the onus of responsibility onto the NHS. Now, when it comes to male hormone replacement therapy, we need to take the bull by the horns and actually educate our doctors. Because uh, testosterone deficiency is not well understood, appreciated, um, and it's actually not done very well through the NHS, even if you get the diagnosis correct. So it's up to you guys. Um, we should always look for a cause rather than simply a solution. Makes sense, doesn't it? Because if you want to affect a long-term sustainable change, rather than masking the problem with antidepressants, uh, you want to address the cause. Now, obviously, mental illness is an incredibly complex um, and convoluted subject, but um, it makes perfect sense that you should want to address the cause and ergo prevent it from happening again by hopefully resolving the issues that you, you, um, you had. So... Your GP is going to most likely resort to offering you antidepressants and or talking therapies when you present with these symptoms. It's not his fault. Um, there, re there really is a lack of understanding and awareness regarding testosterone deficiency. But you must fight your battle uh, and demand that he looks into causes such as low testosterone and underactive thyroid uh, doing a full blood count um so yeah fight your own battles boys because um nobody's gonna fight them for you we're trying to but we, you need to fight your battles and um, what else uh low libido and erectile dysfunction again you're going to be offered uh, viagra the magic little blue pill it may work but it's more than likely not going to work, obviously, if you have an underlying condition uh, that is preventing you from having uh, strong erections and a high libido or normal libido, sorry. So, yeah, again, looking for a cause. Now, the, these two presenting symptoms where, you know, the, the standard NHS treatments are antidepressants uh, and Viagra can both be caused by low testosterone and there's overlap between low libido erectile dysfunction and low mood anxiety depersonalization so it is complicated but again let's look for a cause so you've managed to get your doctor to do a blood test and uh, it's come back say for example nine nanomole per liter <clears throat> according to the BSSM guidelines uh, you would be a candidate for a trial of testosterone replacement therapy. Now, you do need a second confirmatory blood test. Again, another early morning sample, pre preferably in a fasted state, um, to make sure that that first result was correct. Um, so your doctor doesn't know much about testosterone deficiency syndrome. Um, you've presented him with the BSSM guidelines. He's gone, oh, okay, that, yes, this, that, 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 yes, but it's not really my field. Now, your doctor 
signs the prescriptions. Now, when he signs the prescription, he takes responsibility uh, for that prescription and what happens to you because of the medication that he's prescribed. Now, if he doesn't have the confidence to prescribe it, because of obviously um, he's not an expert in the field and he's had no teaching, then he's going to refer you on to an endocrinologist. Now, um, there's a bit of a miscompute between uh, the BSSM and NHS endocrinology. Now, why is that? Because we're both acting in the best interests of our patients. So why is there this kind of almost like a battleground between uh, the guidelines that the BSSM have produced? And these guidelines are based on the latest evidence and research. And they're actually made by endocrinologists and uh, urologists and other doctors. So there are endocrinologists that actually contribute to the BSSM guidelines. So why is there this mis this mis miscompute? Well, um, endocrinologists also have guidelines. And these guidelines share a lot of similarities. But the shortcoming in the endocrinology guidelines is the use of the term abnormal. Now, their application of the term abnormal is to the reference ranges that their local pathology lab uses. Now, rather scarily, we know that testosterone levels are dropping. Now, they're dropping because we live in a sick society. They're dropping because of our exposure to plastics and endocrine disruptors, etc. Um, we haven't changed as a species over this last 100 years. Our, just our environment has changed, um, both internal and external, from both voluntary and involuntary. Um, so, yeah, it's rather shocking that testosterone reference ranges are dropping. Now, there's also regional variation, which doesn't make sense, does it? Well, why would there be regional variation if we are uh, essentially the same? The same but different. Um, yeah, it doesn't stand, stand true, does it? You know, we are homo sapiens. So your, your endocrinologist is bound by this term abnormal. So if your local pathology reference range has 7 to 29 or 6 to da da da, um, if you fall within that range, irrespective of having symptoms of low testosterone, irrespective of being a candidate for TRT according to the BSSM guidelines, your endocrinologist is more than likely going to have to adhere to the endocrinology guidelines. So this term abnormal is obviously doing guys with symptoms and signs of low testosterone a disservice. And it's just reflecting a sick society and guys are not having access to safe and effective care because we are getting sicker. Um, something needs to change. Um, we need to have a more logical, common sense and progressive approach to how we treat and diagnose testosterone deficiency. Um, we are fighting and clinicians can disagree. Medicine is a practice but we should always be acting in the best interests of our patients. Um, not be so strict um, and, and rigid in our ideology because, you know, practice changes. Endocrinology is funny. Um, there's a growing cohort of endocrinologists who do not believe in the diagnosis of testosterone deficiency. Now, traditionally, we've always thought about uh, hypogonadism. So you have a primary hypogonadism, which is a problem with the testicles, uh, or a 
secondary hypogonadism, which is a problem with the brain. Now there are defined pathologies and uh, endocrinologists always like to find a cause. So this cohort of endocrinologists uh, will not give you testosterone replacement therapy even if you have low levels if they cannot identify a cause. Now that I find that quite disgusting. Um, in medicine we also have a term called idiopathic um, and that is a term that we use for things that we don't actually fully understand and the reality is is there are conditions there are circumstances where we cannot identify a defined pathology but the symptoms signs are all consistent with this condition that this person is proposed to have, purported to have. So there is this term idiopathic, but the endocrinologists who um, specialise in inverted commas in testosterone deficiency um, are quite rigid in their ideology or thinking about um, whether a person should qualify for TRT without a defined pathology. Now we know that the use of anabolic steroids, the use of alcohol, recreational drugs, opiates, antidepressants, traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress, etc., uh, etc., et um, are risk factors for testosterone deficiency. But they're not pathologies, and that's where the mis miscommute comes into play, um, which is ridiculous. And these endocrinologists suggest that you should wait another six months. Wait another six months. How long are you supposed to wait and suffer the signs and symptoms and consequences of low testosterone before you actually, actually act in the best interest of the patient and normalize their testosterone levels with testosterone replacement therapy? There's also miscommute when it comes to the use of HCG. And we've spoken about this before, so I'll just mention it very briefly. So ergo, the rationale for prescribing testosterone in low testosterone is sound. You've got low testosterone, prescribe testosterone. But we know that it suppresses the pituitary and we know that HCG mimics luteinizing hormone. So we're essentially re replicating the HPG axis and we should probably look at TRT as in uh, HCG and topping up with testosterone. So more of a hormone replacement therapy. I did that in the last video, so I won't bang on too much. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> your doctor does want to act in your best interests, but it's not happening because of uh, a lack of education a lack of awareness and certain doctors um, who have a bee in their bonnet about uh, the misprescribing of testosterone replacement therapy and I completely agree with that. I think a lot of people are being uh, prescribed testosterone replacement therapy prematurely and inappropriately. So you cannot overemphasize the importance of a thorough diagnostic workup and discussing the risks and benefits of TRT with the patient sat in front of you and jointly deciding if it is actually in their best interests. TRT is about normalization. It's about sustaining long-term physical and psychological health. So educate yourselves, have realistic expectations, and fight your own battles.